Our second guest today joins us live uh, via the phone, and that is David Nixon, former BYU football standout, current BYU TV analyst. We'll start with spring. Actually, you know what? We're going to start with the BYU royal wedding, David. Is that okay? And we we have <laughs> dubbed that Taysom Hill, uh, who is going to be your brother-in-law, marrying your sister Emily, that they have now taken on the BYU royal wedding. Are you okay with us uh, naming it that? You know, I think that's uh, I think that's very fitting. Yeah, sure, that works. <laughs> Dan, how do you how do you feel about that? We I mean, we we talked about it, you know, earlier this year, with with uh, Taysom, you know, marrying your sister, and, and we talked about big brothers being overprotective, things like that. How does it yep. feel now that it's being reality? It's it's surreal now. You guys are really close. How how does that make it, you feel? Yeah, we're real close. We're like two minus three, four days. We're getting married on Saturday. Um, no, I, I, it's it's fun. It's exciting. He Taysom's a great guy and. Uh, you know, after getting to know him a little more, obviously, most recently, um, getting, you know, it, it's just, it's a good, it's a good situation. I, I'm excited for him, um, and they're excited, which is most important. But, uh, you know, now, whenever I'm commentating on the games, I'll have to be careful what I say about them. <laughs> David Nixon on BYU Sports Nation, former BYU football standout and dual threat analyst for BYU TV. We're projecting royal and white wedding colors. I, I don't know. Maybe that's still up for debate. Uh, your family, at least with footballs, is kind of the royal family for BYU Sports Nation. Of course, there's you. And then Craig Bills married your other sister and Taysom and Emily about a week away. Dude, the turkey bowl is going to be off the hook at the Nixon household. How can Brian and I get involved in that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be tough. You have to be over six feet two inches, so <laughs> both of you are hosts. Oh, oh man. yikes. That, wow. That's, hey, that's well played, David Nixon. I, like, I, I actually like that one. I like that one. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe we should have a, another rule that uh, says you have to be 150 pounds. Then I can make it. I don't know about Spencer. <laughs> You're 150 pounds, dude. Over 150 pounds. Okay. Over 150 pounds. David Nixon on BYU Sports Nation. Now to the football. Spring football just wrapped up, and Brian and I spent some time talking about this yesterday, but but how beneficial can spring football really be in the progression of a team because you're not playing with all of the parts? I mean, there are still so many moving parts over the summer that are going to be added to this. So how beneficial was BYU's spring football season for this team in August? You know, I agree, with Brian. It's, it's tough. It's one of those deals where you're really trying to get the younger kids, the, the kids that maybe were on the practice squad you know, during the previous year. You try to get them some reps. And then, and then, of course, your your starters, you, most of them are being held out, or they're kind of nursing some injuries. So um, it's a it's a tough deal. And you know, really, what's most important is coming up in the summer, where the players get away from the coaches. The players now run the practices, and that's when you kind of can get your continuity. That's where you can be out there with the your teammates and, and really getting down your routes or your defenses, and um, you're kind of out of the grasp of the coaches, and and you, all of a sudden your leaders emerge and. So I really think spring's good because, you, once again, you, you get some reps in, uh, but summer's crucial. And then, of course, you know, fall ball, that's, uh, that, that's when it's most crucial. But, um, you know, th- you, lo- you look at the spring ball and who was held out because of injuries and who were kind of coming back off injuries uh, that were kind of limited. Uh, it's tough to get a good look. And, you know, you look, I was at the spring game, and once again, it was, it was tough, to, tough to get a good feel, both the offense and defense, because there's so many missing parts. But, uh, I'm encouraged by you know the the incoming freshmen, uh, the transfers. Those guys are coming in, and the contribution they'll be able to have. And um, I'm optimistic about this upcoming season. Hey, let's talk about something that you are very familiar with, being a linebacker. Uh, and, and this year's linebacking core. I mean, we have Bronson Confusi that that made the switch to uh, outside linebacker from defensive line. Then of course you have Alani Fua. Uh, hashtag feed Alani when he. Students, when you see him on campus, <laughs> feed him. He needs to gain some more weight. Uh, but how how have you seen uh, Bronson's Kafusi? How, how have you seen his transition? How how has that been this spring for him? Man, it's ex- it's exciting. I I talked to both Craig Bills and uh, Taysom about this recently you know, over dinner, and we were discussing how um, yeah that Bronson he's just he's just a feared opponent. You, you look at him, and if you're a running back and you're trying to block him um, when he's coming off the edge, I mean, good luck. You've got a humongous human coming at you, looking to take your head off as a running back. So I think it's going to be tough to game plan for him and have pass protection against him. And he's just so long that when he does get a chance to lock out a tackle um, or a running back, it's going to be tough to defend. And uh, you know, and then you throw up. I think personally, when you see him line up, I think he's felt much more comfortable lining up as an outside linebacker without putting his hand down in the dirt. Uh, and I think this is probably his more natural position. I think originally I was like, man, that's, that's a big body we're going to be missing 
there on the uh, on the defensive line. But I think with the guys that filled in and, and how he's done this this spring, uh, I think uh, everyone should be optimistic about how you know he'll go out there and play. Um, and then and then of course you add in Elani, who Elani's a stud. We've seen what he can do. And then the the, the pieces have been kind of shuffled there, middle linebacker, and then the incoming freshman with Fred Warner and Tyler Cook. I mean, it's I, I think it, it could be a special unit this year. And everyone kind of thought, well, with Calvin Noy leaving, it's gonna be hard to replace him, but. I think uh, I think fans will be surprised at, at how athletic this group will be. BYU TV analyst and former BYU linebacker, also a guy that played four seasons in the NFL, David Nixon, joining us on BYU Sports Nation. When you talk about trying to replace Kyle Van Noy, which probably is a, a once in a decade, maybe once in an every couple of decades type player, then Spencer Hadley, Wani Unga, who was also invited to the NFL Combine, led the team in tackles. How much of a drop-off will BYU have in the linebacking crew this year, given that they have arguably the best linebacking recruiting class and return missionary class coming in that they've ever enjoyed? You know, I, I have to give props to the coaches. I think they've done a great job kind of shuffling around the players. I think there will be a little bit of drop because a lot of these guys are younger, um, not as experienced as you had with uh, Hadley and Van Noy and of course Wadi, but... Um, I, I think you'll see a, a unit that'll come out and play together. Um, and I think you'll see a unit that will fly around. You look at Manoa Pakula and Jeremiah Lutadoyer, and those guys like to hit. And, and that's exactly what you want at your middle linebacker spot. Those guys are fearless. Um, they, they plug holes. They take on the running backs, fullbacks. I mean, they're, they're fun to watch, and they're physical guys. So I, I think you have both in the middle. Then, of course, you, uh, well, like we said, you have Kafusi and um, Fu on the outside. Big, long bodies that cover a lot of ground and pass coverage. Um, I, you know, talking to Taysom, he said, I hate going against Alani because the guy covers so much ground that you don't know what to expect from him. You know, he, he can cover so much ground. He's so long that you try to drop the ball over the top of him, he's most likely going to pick it. And then you think he's not going to get to a spot, because, but because his strides are so long, um, he ends up being there, you know, by the time the ball's there. So uh, it, it's, it's exciting that you know, BYU really hasn't had these huge, long-type bodies at the outside linebacker position. So it's going to be something new for fans to see. But I think they'll be surprised and uh, excited to, to see the output these guys have because, uh, really, they're, they're both very athletic and both big bodies. And, and I think against the run, you'll see, you know, Bronson setting a great edge, forcing everything back in the middle where you'll see your you know, D-line and your linebackers cleaning up. Dave, you mentioned just how good of a job the coaches have been with recruiting. I want to talk about that a little bit more into into depth. Just you, you could take a look at Coach Mendenhall era and even before that, just some of the great linebackers inside and outside. You know, like Coach Papinga, Brian Kill, you know, obviously Wani and, and, and Kyle Vanner, yourself as well. What is it about linebackers and and BYU and why they're so great? I mean, these guys are are going to the NFL. You played in the NFL for a little bit. Uh, is it when you were getting recruited? Was that something in the back of your mind that, hey, this is a linebacker school, I know I have a great opportunity of going to the next level? Or is it more so just the, the coaches and, and, and just their philosophy and, and how they're able to, to teach you guys? You know, I think it's a, it's a mixture of both. I, I, you know, when I was getting recruited, like you said, um, I did realize the history there. You go back to Muirbrook, um, and then you have, you know, it's a long line of, of players that have come through. Uh, you know, you look at Brady Papinga, uh, who, who got drafted high, and um, so the long tradition of, of uh, BYU players, Rob Morris, that, that have come to BYU and had success at the next level. And it's, it's true, BYU has kind of turned into somewhat of a, of a linebacker U. I remember when I was with the Rams, uh, Brian Kill, myself, and Brady Pepino were all on the Rams uh, wow. as linebackers. They only have, you only have an NFL roster, you only have six linebackers on the, on the roster. So half of us, three of us of the six, were BYU guys. And so it was, it was a kind of a fun moment nice. to realize, look, this is this is the real deal. BYU is pumping out NFL athletes um, that go on to the next level to perform, and uh, and you see that this year with Calvin Noy with Wani Unga. Hopefully, he gets back, uh, you know, full strength. But um, I think BYU will continue to pump out these guys, and I think that's why you see guys like Fred Warner and Tyler Cook coming out of high school saying, "I can I see the success that uh, BYU's had at you know both inside and outside." Um, and and coaches are kind of pitching on it, and, and I think the athletes say, "Hey, look, I got a shot." So. Uh, I give credit a little bit to the history and to the coaches. I think the coaches, you know, Coach Minhall with his uh, genius mindset and, uh, on the defense side of the ball, and then he's got a great supporting cast of coaches with Papinga um, and the rest of the coaches, Nick Howell, et cetera. So uh, it, it's an exciting season. And defensively, I think this is going to be one of the strongest defensive units. Secondary-wise, I, I can't remember a year where, you know, the secondary was so loaded um, and, and with depth, too. 
And so I think that's the exciting part of it. Um, but all in all, it'll, it'll be an interesting year. bu has got a, a, an easier schedule, uh, and that's been noted you know, many times, but an easier schedule that here underneath uh, the second year offensively, they'll be able to uh, kind of get going, and then defensively I think they'll be stout as always. David Nixon with us on BYU Sports Nation. David, Brian and I have an, in, uh, an interesting conversation, debate if you will, going on here, and that is not a debate if you win. talent <laughs> versus experience. So let's quantify that for you. Let's talk football now. Uh, 11 players on each side of the ball. Would you rather have a starting 11 of good players with an ex- with experience, meaning they're juniors or seniors, or would you have 11 freshmen that are five-star recruits? What would you take? I'd take experience every day of the week. Boom! Of course you would. <laughs> okay, so three, Brian, one, Spencer. Okay, that's the score. <laughs> that's the score. Okay. No, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a tricky debate, right? And, and obviously a mixture of both is what ideally what you want. But if you had to pick one or the other, um, you need to get a whole bunch of freshmen out there. While they might be great athletes, they could be in wrong positions. They don't understand, you know, with, uh, underneath uh, digs coming across, the, you know, the back and, and a curl coming underneath that or a smash route. They don't understand those concepts. Uh, and so it's tough for them to maybe be in the right position. Whereas in, if you have experience, uh, you know what routes are coming off certain formations, et cetera, and, and it preps you much better. And, you know, football is such a mind game that, uh, of course, you need to be athletic, but there's a lot of strategy to it. You've got to be in the right spots at the right time, and if you're not, you're going to get burned. And uh, so I, ideally it would be a combination, but I, once again, I, I think I'd go with experience over uh, you know, talent. This is, this, is, this is interesting. I'm going to take it a step, a step further because – F- football compared to basketball is is totally different, right? You talk about just the, the body size and the and the body types coming out of high school when you're a freshman in football can compared to to basketball. So here we I, go. I, Brian's got to be right. Well, no, 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 no. I'm just I'm just saying <laughs> I I am on your side. I I now that I with, with David here, I am on your side with with football. I would I would I think I would rather have experience. But basketball, David, what would you rather yeah. have? Talent. Or experience because because ba- because basketball is different. Guys can go yeah. to the NBA when they're seventeen years old, eighteen years old. LeBron James, you know. So what, that's who, the yeah. exception. What, what that's the exception. Kobe Bryant. There, it, it was. We can go. Kevin Garnett. We can go down the list. We're not they, talking they about. Just started changing. We're not talking about five. Kobe we just started Bryants. changing this where <laughs> guys couldn't go to the NBA out of high school anymore. Let, let's let's ask David this. Yeah, I, hey, for, hey, basketball, I definitely take talent. Okay. I mean, all right. ba- basketball is different, too, because you're going one-on-one with guys all the time. One-on-one. They're one. out in the middle of the lane, Boom. and they just go one-on-one. In NBA. In the Boom. NBA. Not in college. Boom. In one-on-one. the NBA. One-on-one. Hey, hey Dimmer, Dimmer he, he's taking guys one-on-one all day long. <laughs> <laughs> One-on-one. David, you were my friend for about 12 minutes of that interview and then my enemy <laughs> for like the last 90 seconds. So. I still love you, David. For the majority, I'll give it. I'll give it. I'll give that to you. Uh, we remind everybody that BYU football will have the the likelihood of enjoying both talent and experience in football. Yes. In on August 29th. Countdown to Connecticut. 143. David Nixon, 143 days away. Get yourself ready, my friend. I can't wait. I'm all, I'm ready. All right. Enjoy, enjoy the royal wedding this weekend as well. <laughs> Try not to yeah, cry, well, David. We'll, 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 I'll post some pics for you guys. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Thanks, David. Yeah, take care.